Hey, we're here at New York Comic Con with Lorraine Sink. How are you doing? Hey, I'm great. I'm doing awesome. It's Comic Con. What's what could be wrong? Right, exactly. So, first question on everyone's mind, very serious. Oh my gosh. With the Watcher gone and you being associated with the Watcher name, do you think you could take over for Watu? Uh, well, I can rock an amazing bald look, so maybe but you know, he has like a wife and all this stuff, so I don't know if I can insert myself into that much of his life. But I think I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the name for a while. I'm gonna keep it around just in case. Keeping the, the name alive. Yeah. How did you get into your work with Marvel? Oh, well that's a good question. It's actually interesting because I, I do this a lot also. Uh, and the way that I got into it was by creating my own content. And every time I talk to a creator, I feel like that's the thing that everybody has to say. I was just creating my own content and somebody noticed. Uh, my friend Michelle and I for a long time did a vlog together called Girl Side and we talked about a lot of geeky stuff, a lot of sci-fi, Star Wars, comic books, that kind of stuff. And then I uh, got introduced to the Marvel folks. They actually found my stuff online. And they reached out to me to come and audition to be the watcher. And now I write the show and I host the show and I do all of the hosting for Marvel Live, which I'm taking a little break from to be here with you guys. But yeah, so basically build it and they will come. Cool. So you have an extensive background in improv. <laughs> How do you find that to help you in your day to day work with Marvel? You know, I think that you have to be on your toes when you're interviewing people and you have to have that kind of. Uh, sort of active brain when you're just talking to people and you want to be able to engage them and have fun with them and especially because I get to talk to so many actors. Actors are, are really fun to interview, you know, they're very animated and it's kind of a good time to just like do little bits of them and I think it just makes for better content but also I think it has a nice way of feeding into comics. A lot of the improv that I do is narrative. I do a lot of musical improv as well, which is all narrative. And I think that that helps me understand comics in a different way and story writing sort of in a different way. Uh, so I think it kind of helps both aspects. So in doing The Watcher, you must come across a lot of insider information. Is it more of like, oh my god, I'm freaking out because I know this information, or oh my god, it's another day at the office? You know, I still freak out. Uh, about when I hear things. I know things. Um, and I think it's really hard. Like, I had some stuff in uh, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on ABC that got spoiled for me before the season finale, and it was right before the season finale. I also had stuff from Captain America, The Winter Soldier, get spoiled for me. And so sometimes it's really hard, actually, because you're like, no, don't. Don't tell me that. I I don't I want to I don't want to know who the bad guy is. I I want it to be a surprise when I get there. Um, so some of it is kind of hard because it's spoiler heavy. But um, no, I think I think the excitement is still alive. So comic books is a medium where things are getting more progressive and diverse. What is one of your most favorite things about this new movement? And what do you think other entertainment uh, forms could do to follow in comic books' footsteps? Uh, this is something that is actually very near and dear to my heart. I actually recently did an episode of The Watcher where I talked a lot about female Thor, and I know there's been a lot of controversy about it, but I think that there is something about taking a character whose name is so synonymous with sort of like masculine uh, power, as well as just literally godlike power, and imbuing that onto a female character. And I think that. I would like to see it definitely more in films. I was actually having this conversation last night of like, wouldn't it be interesting if we were required as, as filmmakers or uh, TV shows, whatever it might be, whatever medium, had to look at a demographics sheet of the United States and represent that. So 50% of it would be female and 50% would be male and whatever the breakdowns of different uh, ethnicities, different religions would all be represented. Like, how cool would that be? Um, I don't know that that kind of thing will ever come. And I definitely think they, there are different type of stories that uh, should be told and maybe don't always perfectly fit into that. But I, I would love to see that go across media for sure. Uh, who are some of your favorite heroes that are being spotlighted now that this new movement is up and going? 
Oh man, I love Miss Marvel. G. Willow Wilson is so brilliant. I think she's really funny. And the thing that I love about her actually is I think a lot of people were like, oh, here's a diverse character. And they were kind of giving attitude about that. But she's so much more than her diversity. You know, she's she's a normal teen girl. She's a fan girl. She's really funny and quirky and kind of like, you know, riddled with mistakes, but in a very lovable way. Uh, and I, I just, I think she's fantastic and I think a real testament to G. Willow Wilson's writing and the character's depth is how much it goes back for reprint after reprint after reprint. Uh, so I definitely love her. I love Captain Marvel. I'm a big fan of all the female titles in general. I mean, it is my demographic. Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think there are so many great characters that I'm really looking forward to seeing Squirrel Girl. Me too. I was very happy when I saw the press release. Did you read the new Batgirl? What did you think of that? Um, I have not read the new Batgirl, but I love her redesign. I think it's really cool. I love that it's accessible. I love that it's age appropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it's just a cool design because it, it looks like something that she would have created. So yeah. I'm looking forward to actually picking it up. Shh, don't tell. <laughs> I don't know why, but I really like the snaps on the cape. It's, it's, oh, yeah. It, it's very functional. I dig mm -hmm. that, you know? So for other people, you know, um, of all walks of life who would like to get into this and do what you do, what advice would you have for them? Do it. Don't wait for somebody to tell you that you can do it. Don't wait for somebody to tell you you're valid. If you have something to say and you're a person, then you have a perspective that you should share. So if you want to be making videos, go home, get in front of a video camera, start making those videos. You've got to, you've got to learn how to do it now. Uh, something I love that Kelly Sue always says is write your S-word comics now. So if you want to be writing comics, you better sit down and start writing some comics or drawing some art because nobody is going to say, hey, guy on the street, girl on the street, here's a comic book to write or here's a video to make or here's a movie to make. Never going to happen. You got to show us. So go home and show us you're awesome and just do it. Find the time and prioritize it. Cool. Well, Lorraine, thank you so much for thank taking you. some time out. Oh, my pleasure. When will we get to see Lorraine sink in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Oh, oh Joss, <laughs> what are you doing to me? No, I mean, I would love to be, but we'll see. They got to call me, babies. They got to call me, so we'll see. I know Jeff Loeb's going to be here. Well, Jeff, Joss, whoever, you know, you know where to find me. I'm at Marvel HQ, <laughs> so we'll see.